Hey, West Coast Johnny, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. So today I'm doing something really special. I'm building an exotic hardwood urn, wooden urn, for a family member who passed away. And I wanted the wood to be um, something super interesting and special, like he was. So I went to a place in El Cajon, California, and they sell like hardwoods, exotic hardwoods, and I found, um, well, they have a lot of cool stuff there, but I found some wood called Sapelli. And if uh, you look at it, like it almost changes colors. Um, like you'll see the, the gray, like these stripes in it, right? So it'll have like three white stripes and then two dark stripes coming this way. And then when you flip the board just like this and look at it, now all of a sudden they reverse and now you have three dark stripes and two light stripes. It was just really interesting. So we're gonna make the whole urn out of that. And I'm gonna uh, cut it out on the table saw here. See these designs? The other one I was looking at here, it's an exotic one. One's called Jara, and the one is called Afromasia. But the look of the other one is, I think, with the, the little designs, I'm gonna get that one. This is really nice too. So the dimensions we're building it are 7 inches by 11 and the bottom is going to come off and then be able to close with four screws. So that's it. Let me show you the wood. So here is the Sapelli wood. It has a shadow on it. It's a, uh, it almost looks like a bird's eye maple or a four, it's called quarter, four quarter maple. It's, uh, but it's not. And see how the colors, see, so you got the, the white here, the light stripes. But then when you go this way, they reverse and then they all become dark. And then anyways, when this is coated, when it's all finished with the uh, tongue oil that I'm using, this thing is going to completely pop. It's going to look amazing. So let's get to cutting. Literally a sixteenth away of an inch away from the blade. Okay. Here's my four sides. Now these two are three quarters of an inch wider than these two because these two are gonna go on the inside like this see so that's what's gonna make it up to make it so it's still square so what I'm gonna do um, it still has the resawn the resawn face or finish on the edges so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the sides um, get them all exactly the same length and then we can uh, clamp it all together like do a dry fit and then we can make our lid and we can make our base and then we'll start gluing things together except the bottom well i just realized as i'm looking at this uh, nothing's glued or anything but i made it so that all the grain goes this way i wasn't really paying it much attention and i did not want that to happen so what i'm going to do is recut it i got an extra piece I bought the whole piece. It gave me a, a nice uh, contractor's discount. But what, I, but what I want to do, I want the grain to go up. So when you're looking straight on at the urn, the designs go up, not you know horizontally. We want them just to go up vertically. So let me recut the pieces and then we'll start forming them together.
Okay, well, I'm really satisfied with the shape and it, everything fits very square. So I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing these four sides together and then I'm going to make the top and the bottom afterwards. I'm just making sure everything is nice and square. So when the glue dries, so I want to clamp it in a second, but just got to get it positioned. Okay, well, here's our urn. It's just, uh, it's right now it's clamped and glued, and I'm just gonna let it dry overnight. So tomorrow I can start sanding it. I gotta fine tune some of the edges. I don't know why that moved, but I'm gonna sand this down really nice. It's gonna be beautiful. So we're going to call it a day as far as this. I'm gonna put that in the shop so I can go do something else, and we'll continue this tomorrow. Okay, well, I got up early this morning and I started sanding this and I want to show you how it's turning out it's really taking some good shape so my next step is I'm going to make the top but I don't want the top to go all the way across I changed it uh, before it used to go across see like you can see the line and now I just erase that line because I don't want to see it so we're gonna put the wood inside here inside and then this is going to come up and be round and then just go straight across the bottom though is square see i didn't it still has the uh, sharp angles we're just going to have a base that unscrews it's going to be kind of simple so i'm going to go ahead and trace this hole out onto this wood so we can insert our new top okay i got my piece cut out i sanded it i made it about a a sixteenth of an inch bigger on all four sides and then I just sanded it with my sander until it would fit in here very snug and uh, almost like a slip fit see that see how it goes in but it won't fall in um, what you don't want to have to do is hit it in hard with the hammer because it's going to put stress on the joints so this has to fit like a glove it can't be too big and then you hit it because for one I didn't use any nails on here or any screws there's no fasteners on this and there doesn't really need to be except for the bottom so you could open it up and put the cremains in and close it but you don't need screws and nails this isn't there's no moving parts and this is going to be placed in like a little you know a, a final resting spot so instead of having a bunch of screws and nails we just we don't want to see anything like that just pure shiny wood pretty close. We're going to stop right there. This has to be just right. So just a little bit to sand on the sides. Okay. So now I gotta start the hole that's in the actual urn body itself. And that's so in the uh, more in the funeral home, when they put the remains inside, then they can 
screw this down and there'll be a hole. See, it's gonna go right there. I know it's close. I guess I should have got a little, came in a little, but um, this is extremely hard wood, so nothing's gonna happen. Okay, well, I was trying to tighten the screw up and I barely even put any pressure on it. And look at that, it broke right off. And the more I look at this, this, th this is what they're calling brass. This is the brass screws at Home Depot. If you look at that, that's not even the color of brass. It's like just coated with a very light, as, and if you, if you look in the middle where it broke, you can see silver coloring in there. That's not brass. This is just actual junk. So we're gonna go ahead and get this out and we're just gonna find some other screws. Now that the screws are on and they're countersunk, and this cannot move, I'm gonna go ahead and sand all around so everything is nice and flush. Okay, I started sanding it. It's getting pretty smooth. I want it so it's flush. So instead of using uh, this guy, I decided to get my old um, locomotive uh, style sander out and this has 50 grit so it's gonna kind of uh, take it off a little quicker which is what I want I want it to be all perfectly one this thing really pulls Okay, that's about as flush as I'm going to get it. So, uh, yeah, that turned out good. Okay, well, I sanded it all sides really, really nice. I got all the corners all hand sanded. No, everything's rounded off, but I didn't want to use a router. I just wanted to do it by hand, and it turned out really nice. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to get all the dust off of it and I'm going to give it a coat of tongue oil. Well, here is the urn. I put it on a block. I still have to sand and stain the bottom, but I put it on a little block so that it looks like it's floating. And that's just one coat of the tongue oil. So we're gonna do a light sand and I'm gonna put another coat on. I'm gonna to try to get a, as many coats on as I can. Unfortunately, it takes about six to eight hours for each coat to dry. But this is how it's looking. And I wanted to say something important about abrasives. So see this right here? That's what I used, 50 grit. It's really, really rough. And I used that when I was sanding all of this, trying to make it all flush. And normally I don't wear gloves around moving machinery, but the, um, the big belt sander actually isn't very dangerous and I should have had a glove on. Because while I was holding this and sanding, 
I just barely touched my hand yesterday and it just took a big chunk out. Uh, so you have to be careful with abrasives. Always wear gloves around 50 grit, 36 grit, 40 grit, even 80 grit can really hurt your skin. So I'm gonna put it back in the abrasives cabinet and we're gonna finish more on the urn. Well, it's finished. So I got uh, three coats of tongue oil on and in between each coat, I sanded with 320, which was pretty fine sandpaper, the whole thing. And it just makes the next coat look even smoother and shinier. So here's the bottom with the little bait, the little stand, and you can see the screws and stuff. This is still kind of drying, but um, I think it turned out really cool. And let me show you um, how it looks with the light shining on it. See the, see the colors? They're really pretty. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. And um, if anyone has any questions or comments, or you have any ideas, uh, let me know in the comment section. And I want to also thank all my new subscribers. And I'll just talk to everybody later. Okay, thanks.